As arborists, we are one of the last professions where we still use knots for our everyday work. In recent years, or for quite a few years now, splices and sewn eye terminations and mechanical devices have come and more and more taken the place of knots for a good reason, and I do use them myself, but I also think we should maintain our knowledge of knots and the use of them. So we will be talking about friction hitches today, just a few of them and not for tree climbing, but for the application in tree work, like pulling over back leaning trees, uh, mechanical advantage systems and also progress capture of them. That's where we will end up. Behind me I have a little test set up. Let's suppose I've set a line in a tree and I need to pull that tree over. In order to do that I want to attach a double pulley system to this rope. So why would I use a friction hitch for that and not just put a bowline on a bite on the rope right there? There's a few reasons. One being that friction hitches allow me to adjust the point where my pulley system is attached and slide it along as I need to. Another reason being that you can put friction hitches on a rope even when the rope is under tension. So the first friction hitch people reach for in these kind of applications is the prusik hitch. The prusik hitch is tied with an endless loop and typically you use thinner material than the rope that you will tie it on. This is a double fisherman's knot used to tie the loop and I'll move it down towards one end of the loop. Then I'll put the loop around my rope passing the end with the double fisherman's knot through the other loop three times and then of course I have to make it nice and tidy and I've now created a three rep brassic. This knot locks well it, it can be a bit hard to move especially after it's been loaded but the nice thing about it is that it works both ways without having to be readjusted and it's also very easy to remember and to tie it does have its limitations though the one in this application being that it it's not as strong in the sense that it doesn't spread the load over a very big area on the rope a better friction hitch to use for this kind of application, for example attaching our double pulley system to the pull rope, in my opinion is the Val de Tarn, which is probably the most popular climbing hitch and many people know it. For tree climbing we usually use the Val de Tarn tress, where we first put in a few wraps and then braids, which will make it easier to advance the knot. And in these applications, advancing the knot easily is not that important, but we want maximum amount of surface on the pull rope to spread out the load. Therefore, we only use the Val de Tarn. That means we do not put in any braids. We just use wraps. For the Val de Tarn, of course, you need an iron eye sling. And I'll demonstrate how it's tied. Just put it on the rope and then start bringing it around. You can go like this. Makes it go faster. Put in your carabiner. Adjust it a little bit. And this knot spreads out the load over a longer distance on the pull rope. And it's also easy to advance after it's been loaded. What I like about the Val d'Otan is that it is easy to tie and quick to tie. It's a very clean setup. It is also easy to advance and to untie after having been loaded. You do however need an iron eye sling and it needs to be one that you will not be using for tree climbing but only for rigging. It is still not the strongest friction hitch for these applications. There's another one that will spread out the load even more and it is in the same family of the French friction hitches and it is the Machart knot. The Machart knot, like the Prostic knot, is also tied using a loop, an endless loop. It does however work better with a softer material since the stiffer ropes tend to twist once you come to the last wraps. So I use Samson Eyes tell for that as application as well. It is a very soft rope. 
It is also heat resistant, has a high braking strength of 35 kN I believe and it bites good on the pull rope. To tie the machard, I notice again it is not a machard tress with braids, it will only be the wraps, so it's the machard. To tie the machard again, we take the knot that is used to form the loop, in this case the water knot, and put it almost at the end, not quite here, but just, just above the end of the one side of the loop. And we then start taking wraps upward and we make sure that we wrap it nice and parallel. As you can see it allows me to put quite a few wraps on this rope and it will spread out the friction over a, a very large area. Attach the carabiner to both slings. Set it a little bit, test it, and it works well. This knot is also easy to advance after it has been loaded, and of course easy to untie. The machard has a very strong friction hitch for two reasons. Again, this long distance where the friction is applied to the rope, and also the fact that the load is essentially carried by four strands of this material. Samson Ice Tail having a brake load of 35 kN means that this knot is actually good for 140 kN minus the reduction in strength that the knot, in this case the water knot, causes, which I believe still maintains two thirds of the strength of the cordage. So, on this 14 mm rope, I was able to put on nine wraps with the, this loop that I'm using, which is made up out of 2.2 meters of Samson Ice Tail. I would like to finish up this video by talking a little bit more about the Machard knot in an application for progress capture. And before we do so, I have to say that I did not come up with this idea myself, but I found it in an article written by Dirk Lingens who wrote the Tree Climbers Notebook, which is this little book. What we will talk about now is not described in this book, but I found it in an article written by the author of this book. So being able to capture the progress that we've made in pulling a rope without it being fed out again the moment we let go can be a very handy tool and a good idea in many different applications. There's mechanical ways to do it, and of course there's different ways to pull over trees with winches, with equipment, machinery, but this is a method that uses minimal equipment that everybody can have with them in their car, in their climbing bag even, and it is quite capable. Not perfect, but very capable. To set it up you need a pulley with a straight edge on the bottom, like this ISC pulley. That edge will allow for you not to be pushed along. I will be using this beefy steel carabiner that will be able to cope with the loads. Then we take our pull rope and set up the machard knot as demonstrated earlier. On this 14 mm rope I am able to put on 9 wraps I believe. And that will work on ropes that are both thinner and thicker as well. Then I will use this loop that is about twice the length of my pulley and I feed it through the two legs of the machard and fold it over like this to form a basket configuration. I always want the knot that will carry the load at the spine of the carabiner and the pulley towards the gate. This loop allows the machard to begin where the pulley ends and it is therefore advanced more effectively. Now when I pull here, 
the shard knot is advanced, and what I pull through will be captured if I release. Notice that this will not work as a redirect. If I were to pull here, the machard would miss the straight edge of the pulley. This leg of the rope needs to run parallel to the other leg in order for this to work. What I can now do is set up either a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage system, for example using the Valdetan, I take another pulley, put the loose end of the rope through, clip it to the Valdetan, suck out the slack by hand first. Make sure everything is nice and tidy down here. Now I have built myself a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage system with Procris Capture. This works on all kinds of sizes of ropes that you would use in this application, ranging from probably 12 millimeters up to 20 if you feel the need and if you can find pulleys to fit those. If we need more pulling power, we can use the double pulley system. Take off this pulley, clip the end with the loose end to the top, and now, very importantly, since we need to feed this part so that the machard knot advances, we can't just anchor the end of the double pulley system to our anchor down here, but we have to anchor to this rope. We will be pulling in this direction, therefore, we put in another friction hitch here, the Valdetan, clip the end of the pulley system to this friction hitch, feed out some slack into the system and advance it as much as we can to get the most pull out of it. And notice now that we will be pulling these two friction hitches together. What that does it is that it actually doubles our pulling power. So we are not only pulling 5 to 1 with this yellow rope, but since we are pulling these two towards each other, that is doubled. So we are pulling with 10 times my strength. And we are advancing the Machart knot as our progress capture. Now it could be argued that it might be easier to have a Procris Capture Prusik in the double pulley system. However, that will not allow you to advance your double pulley system if you would run out of length on it. Here the McCart holds the pull rope and you can adjust your double pulley system as many times as you like. This setup with a machard knot for progress capture offers the following advantages over mechanical devices. It has a brake load equal or higher to that of the main rope. It is easy on the rope. It is self-feeding. It is reversible and it works on a variety of different rope diameters. Friction hitches and systems like this do have their pros and cons. They require some practice to set up and also some attention to make sure everything is running properly and smoothly. But as you saw, with minimal equipment, we were able to achieve something that you would otherwise need machinery or mechanical devices and winches for. I've been using this system for quite a few years. I've always been successful with it and happy with it. Give it some patience and practice so that setting up goes smoother and takes less time. I'll put a list of the included materials at the end. The Samson Icetail is in my opinion the best rope for this application and is also the one that was suggested by Dirk Lingens in his article. Thanks for watching.